These are the video notes for section 7.4, part B, where we're looking at solving trigonometric equations. To start this off, I want to take another conceptual look at using inverse trig functions, just to make sure we understand how to do that. For example, we could look at, let's say, 2 sine of x equals 1. Well, we know we would solve this by saying that sine of x equals 1 half, and that we could then go to our unit circle and find that where the y value is 1 half occurs at pi over 6, or 30 degrees, and 5 pi over 6 and 150 degrees. So if sine of x equals 1 half, then x must be either pi 6 or 5 pi 6. Or if you are more comfortable in degrees, it's 30 degrees or 150 degrees. But we're not just limited to those two solutions. These are the two distinct solutions. What we also need to realize is we could go an entire circle and then stop at pi 6. And that would give us pi 6 plus 2 pi. Or we could go two full rotations and then stop at pi 6. Basically, we can go as many 2 pi's as we want to. So we're going to say that we're going to add 2 pi times n, where n is an integer. And we'll do the same thing for the 5 pi over 6. And if you feel more comfortable in degrees, it means we could go full 360 degrees as many times as we want, as long as we stop at our angle. So we're going to add a 360 times n plus 360 times n. Okay. But that's only if our answers are on the unit circle. Let's generalize this and make it a little bit easier. But first things first, this is your full complete answer for a problem like that, as long as you make sure to define n as an element of z. All right, so let's say the value was not on our unit circle, such as solving for sine of x equal to 0.8. Well, we can move sine to the other side by taking sine inverse. So we're looking, we're saying that x equals sine inverse of 0.8. We plug this value into our calculator. Hit second sine, that will give you sine inverse, 0.8, and then we get two options depending on what mode you're in. If we're in radians, we're going to get, let's see, sine inverse of 0.8, 0 0.9273, and if we're in degrees, you get 53.1301. Well, what this means is that we are somewhere on our circle with an angle theta. And that's what that x is. For sine, the corresponding angle is flipped onto the left-hand side. So to find this angle in blue, we have to take pi minus theta. So to find the other angle, we do pi minus 0.9273. And that gives us 2.2143. Or if we do degrees, we're going to do 180 minus the 53.1301. And that gives us. 126. Point nine nine. So here's degrees in red and here's radians in the top red. Essentially what we see though is any angle theta that we get, the other angle in blue is going to be pi minus theta. So we can generalize this. 